people I found this amazing um, wallpaper and I thought it would be really really interesting to paint a zebra on top of it the stark um, differences between the black and white of the zebra and the shininess of the silver now I have drawn him out beforehand um, actually Eddie was practicing his music with a violinist and it was really good and while they were using my studio I painted the zebra and I'm just using ordinary acrylic just to paint him in um, <laughs> he's has a few mistakes which sometimes painting laying down um, or drawing with it laying down and being absolutely blown away by the music I heard I never noticed one of the mistakes or two mistakes that I made but I'm not going to tell you what they are not because I don't want you to see them it's just that um, it's keeping my hand in I was excited by the process and hopefully next time I won't do them again because I would have picked up on them we learn far more from our mistakes than we actually do from getting something perfect and the art of drawing excuse me if you can hear some sounds but I'm actually in the room we call the hamster room because it's a small room and we used to have the hamster in it and now we have two cockatiels which I have covered up but they can still hear them two dogs sat next to me and two guinea pigs that every now and again you can hear them drinking out of their water bottle but anyway <laughs> thank you birdie i digress um what was i saying yeah we learn far more from our mistakes than doing something perfect and the art of drawing is actually looking as our mind always wants to give us a shortcut no matter how much we try it always wants to give us a shortcut and if it says I want to draw zebras then automatically a bit like Google search zebras appear and so we really have to be very mindful almost to the point of meditation really to stop what's called the monkey brain and actually start to look with our eyes really focus and gather in that information if you picked up something off the floor that was strange that you'd never seen before you would really examine that object and ask information about it but we don't seem to do that when it comes to actually drawing something we're familiar with and I draw quite a few horses and so the basic shape um, does come quite easy but because it does this is a good example of the monkey brain switching off because I was listening to the music and um, well it doesn't really matter because I enjoyed this piece and this piece is just to keep my hand in so um, but if you are out there and you do want to draw something and you really want to draw it badly again do lots of sketches and look really look at the piece look at the angles look at the shapes because that's what basic drawing is it's just angles and shapes and then we fill in the narrative as we start to fill in the picture and I do love zebras I do love painting them I love that stark contrast the pattern it is to me it's it, it's, it's fulfillment it, there's something pleasing about doing these lines and also one thing about drawing a zebra or any animal with a pattern it gets you to think about the contract contours of the body as you can see what I'm doing with the neck I'm giving the illusion that the neck is actually curved in and out and it's a good way of practicing 
because as I say to many of my students, drawing or painting is a relay of information. Now in real life, zebras are not ironed out, they are not flat, they are curved, it's the same as a dog or a cat or a car. And if you get into the practice of drawing the lines with that curvature in mind, then when you paint it, you will begin to make the animal become more 3D, which is really, really important because you want someone to be able to look at the picture with their eyes and imagine that the hand is running over the surface of that creature and so as you can see the the mane of the zebra sticks up a bit like a uh, uh, a broom but the neck then comes out rounds off and then goes in to where the throat is now for this piece i just used acrylic paint um, and white pen that's all i use for this piece and again i can never emphasize enough shading shading again is again giving the information that the animal is 3d and shading is the only way to really enhance that now with this zebra i wanted to mix mix the gray shading with the white so i did one area at a time and then blended the white in with the gray because if you do all the shadowing sometimes at once it dries and then you are unable to mix it so it's advisable to do one area at a time also when i actually um, stick this to the background i use yes paste now i don't know if any of you have heard of yes paste it's a little bit more expensive than mod podge or pva glue and i believe that it is used by bookbinders and if you apply it to the surface with a piece of plastic you can get a really 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 smooth application of it and then when you apply it to the background if you use a cloth and then just gently pat it down you will find that the picture will stick a lot better than actually using Mod Podge which tends to crinkle if you put a wet surface on something that is textured and this wallpaper is minutely textured you do tend to get creases and you know this does give you the ability to pull the picture on and off until it settles right so as I'm narrating this um, I'm going to be posting a few more pictures and artist blogs up um, I hurt my knee somehow I've somehow damaged a tendon that runs along the kneecap and it's playing up with my arthritis so I have to take things easy and through this I've um, got to have some time in my studio it's a bit frustrating because being self-employed I need to work but also um, it is nice to have that guilty pleasure of being able to play in the studio I did have some students over yesterday and we made some frogfish now frogfish are something I'd never heard about and uh, my student is extremely bright and extremely well informed in nature he's only eight but he is an amazing little chap with his information and I asked him 
what would you like to do next because he likes to do 3D things and I love to do 3D things and he looked at me and goes I'd love to do a fog fish and I'm like yep right okay fog fish and I looked at him skeptically and he goes no no seriously B it exists and so we looked it up and there is this amazing fog fish um, when I when I googled it and watched it one of the guys were looking for them to show the public and he said that they live on coral they don't eat coral they eat fish they have this ex a massive wide mouth that actually um, catches fish and it's hard to touch it's not scaly it's not slimy it's very very hard to touch like the coral so um, we are now making our own version of the frogfish and he came along to my studio and it's there, there on my table the one I've started and theirs and it's quite funny seeing these frogfish because we give them big googly eyes where actually the frogfish only has a very minute eye almost like a hole in a piece of coral anyway <laughs> We're doing this frogfish and I always like to be one step ahead of my students so that I can actually do the process first so that I can see any problems and help them overcome them so they don't become dissatisfied with art because being younger sometimes they can be quite judgmental of their work when they get to a certain age and worry about it and I'd like to iron out those problems or help them overcome their problems you know before it becomes the inner critic and an issue so I said to him what would you like to draw next and he turned around and said a goblin shark well I couldn't stop laughing a goblin shark I said yes he said I goes no 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 now we're in the realms of fairy tale and I could imagine this shark with a, a hooked nose and pointy ears and a pointy chin and he looked at me all seriously and said no a goblin shark really does exist so thanks to having a birthday recently I've managed to put some money aside and get some internet into my studio so we googled goblin shark and there he was the goblin shark <laughs> so I'm going to think about how I can do this goblin shark to make it quite funny he is he does like things to be perfect but I think if we do add some aspects of the fairy tale goblin I do think it would be quite fun to create this shark so he then went on to tell me <laughs> sorry for laughing but it's quite funny he went on to tell me that there was a cookie cutter shark <laughs> no 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 <laughs> not a cookie cutting shark and he turned around and said yes so off we trotted back to Google and sure enough there was the cookie cutting shark I don't think they'd be making one of those but it is it was quite funny and then we spent the rest of the time talking about animals with really obscure names like does the wolf spider is it grey and hairy and runs in the pack? Oh, we did have such a good evening. And I am so pleased that they were able to come to the studio so not to miss out on their lesson. Anyway, as you can see now, I am highlighting with a white pen just some of the highlights. Now, these, these pens are pretty awesome, but they do have a problem because sometimes they will not... Um, last very long they do dry out which is a problem but they are good because you can do really bold marks with them or you can smudge them just to give them a hint of a highlight and as you can see I do think he looks rather good on the silver paper so please go and raid your local shop for paper anyway please 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 comment like thumbs up but most of all subscribe we would love you to come and visit our channel more regularly anyway take care bye